Professor Bilenga. I'm working in Geneva University Hospital as a neurosurgeon and um, I spend uh, the last um, five, six years working on uh, improving navigation system using microscopes and today I will present uh, the microscope enhanced navigation. What I will present is, a, is an overview of a methods we use. Um, I presented yesterday uh, our experience with the concept and uh, to this morning I actually uh, presented on, on uh, the overview, the perspective of how um, we, we see uh, the evolution. And um, now I'm just actually going to wrap everything uh, and, and give some more videos and some more insights into the details. The concept is actually to use the microscope to register. And um, you can use the microscope to register using the face of the patient to have a, rub, to have a, a kind of a first alignment. And um, here you can actually use the eyebrow, the nose, uh, the ear, which gives you access. So you can actually see if your navigation is shifted or if it's rotated. And there is a way now to actually digitally correct that manually, interacting with the navigation to re-register. Then, when you, what you can do is when you open the skin, you can expose bone. And on the bone, there are lots of landmarks. There are sutures. There are diploic veins going through holes. Um, there are special um, bumps and hills and, and valleys that you can, uh, you can follow. So in blue here are the usual landmarks we use to actually make a very precise registration of the navigation, meaning that on the imaging we recognize those features and on the patients we recognize the same features and realign the navigation according to those features. Now, this is for the outside, but when you open the skull, you still have bone inside. And here again, there are features classical features you can use uh, to actually re-register. So classically, you will have here the uh, sphenoid ridge, which you can be drilling and uh, you can readjust. You will have uh, here, most probably, the uh, meningeal artery groove you can find. Um, and in the posterior fossa, you can have the auditory uh, canal, the internal auditory canal, for example. Then, once you have access to the brain itself, the brain is full of vessels. And here is actually the concept that you can recognize vessels, and each vessel has bifurcation, which has a very typical and unique shape. So you can take advantage of that shape to actually register using signature structures. So here is the concept that you have the image you see. On the right side, you have the digital image reconstruction of the vessel. And you can actually see that there is here a Y shape, which is the same. This is the signature structure you can register. And the idea is actually to make an edge detection and to get, in the future, a computer in doing that for you. So that the, the computer is going to recognize those different shapes all around your surgical pass, and he's going to link to it, and he's going to readjust uh, the, the navigation according to those landmarks. Now, when you open the brain, you're facing the cortex and the white matter, and maybe the tumor. And here you can see that there are differences in gray shades, and actually those differences in gray shapes are very similar to what you can see on imaging, on uh, T2 images or on um, different types of images. And actually you can see that here there's a shape, and this shape is very similar to what you see in the operating field. And again, you can use those characteristic shape to actually re-register at the millimetric level. So here actually there's the cortex, and here there's some tumor, and uh, you can see that you can map those two things. And if you go deeper, you end up with the ventricles. And the ventricles are easy cavities to uh, segment. So the blue image here is quite easy to, to obtain. And, and when you open here, here the ventricle, well, you can see if your virtual ventricle is actually well adjusted with the, the, the real ventricle. This is an example of an AVM where you can see the vessels of the AVM using GLOW 800. 
And uh, you can have here the image of the MIP images of the image that was acquired prior to the operation. And you can see that the green and the white here overlap quite well. So the idea here is again to have a computer adjusting that so that actually you have tracking, automatic tracking uh, continuously during the operation. Now, in side when you go operating on tumors, you can use 5-ALA, and 5-ALA is going to be fluorescent, and the edges of, of the fluorescence actually correspond to the contrast enhancement you have on imaging. So if you segment prior to the surgery the tumor, uh, you can actually overlay the image of the tumor with the fluorescence, and again, there are edges, there are shapes you can re-register. So that's the example I just showed here. Now, what we did in that case is that before we removed more, we actually tested for the blue thing. The blue thing is actually the visual track, and we are able to stimulate the visual track and see if we have a visual response. And here we can actually monitor how close we are from this visual track, so we have a functional mapping we can link to the shape mapping. And again, here, we were very carefully removing the latest, the, the small fluorescence remaining here. And uh, we can see that actually at the end, there is no fluorescence anymore. And we preserved the optic tracts. So now, if you're able continuously to register at the microscopic level, you can actually link many different things together. And this is kind of a, a very fancy and funny and interesting concept. Uh, it's the digital avatar. So there is already a population of about 400 avatars existing that are actually segmented individuals. And those avatars, they correspond to each of us. So we have our closest avatar. So we can actually start with our baby avatar and grow all our life with our avatar. And every time we do imaging, we can actually capture our own data and get that own data recorded in the avatar which allows us to bind the real data with the interpolated other data from your body. Typically, when you want to look at vessels in the, in the skull, you, you want to do flow simulation, you need to know how the flow is going to be out of the heart and how it's going to be in the head. And the flow conditions that are actually fixed by your carotid arteries. So if you don't know the carotid arteries because it's out of the image, then you can extrapolate from the model, from the avatar. Now. Once you have the head of the image, you can register your microscope. You can register the picture you take with the microscope onto the imaging. So you actually can record your operating field position, and everything you see in your operating field can be tracked back to the original reference image. And again, whatever you do here, you can connect it to a position. So you can reconnect all the data you acquire from a patient on a pixel base back to a reference object. So that opens a lot of opportunities. So now I'm going to go through some examples. So that's typically what we see. We have this blue segmentation of the face from the imaging. And we look how this blue segmentation is overlaying with the face. And we can do it dynamically up and down. This is a posterior fossa. And this is to illustrate actually how you see it. When you see it through the microscope, the experience is different from what you see here because it's, it's designed actually to... It's designed not to disturb the surgeon, so it's very faint. But when you look at it, you actually see that it's very comfortable. So here there's the transverse sinus, there is the... Uh, vertebral artery, there's the green point is actually the place where we're going to open the arachnoid. So here we adjust to the bone. So you see that there's this hole here and there is here this mastoid suture. You actually defined it segmented but prior to the surgery and here we realign it. So we are sure that the sinus is going to be where it is. Now be careful on that image and this is quite important to understand. There is parallax. The sinus is actually below the skull, so it's deeper. So if you change your trajectory, the projection on the surface of the bone is gonna be changing. So we draw here the sinus, and you see that this is shifted because we changed the trajectory of the microscope between the drawing and the picture. So it's very important to have a recorded trajectory where you align all your projections. As soon as you change from that, all your drawing is changing. 
This is just prior to opening the Dura. So you see actually here that we were able to really open very carefully and very close to the sinus and you, we, can, we were able to expose a little bit of the sinus here to show that it's really accurate. Now here, when you move, when you get, you drain CSF, you have brain shift. And here you see that everything is shifting. So I'm gonna help you a little bit. There is here a faint image of the vertebral artery and there is here the vertebral artery. So you can see that and you can readjust again towards the vertebral artery. Here, you see this is the 11th nerve going in the jugular foramen, and this is the jugular foramen, so you see that this should be here. So actually, you can shift it back, put it to the correct position, and then you're locked again in a very precise location. So that's a little bit later. So now here, if you didn't follow the surgery, it's difficult to, to know what's, what's going on. It's difficult to know the anatomy here. Now here, it's much easier to see the schwannoma, to see the auditory canal, and to see the vestibular system. And we used actually to drill the bone on the top of the auditory canal, and you see it's quite close to the vestibular system. So it actually, it's quite nice to see it, but you see that it's shifted. And this is because I don't want to overlay at that time the tumor with what I'm going to drill. So I shifted away to actually know what's the distance between the edge of the bone and the vestibular system. And I know that this distance can be drilled without problems. So that's what we do here. This is another example where you see that here we didn't have time to prepare. So we're using the map images to actually scan and see how well it is adjusted. So we don't have the face of the patient that has been segmented. We actually use the real raw data and we just scan through. And here we're able to see the tumor and you see that the tumor is on the edge of the ventricle. So this case is gonna be, is allowing me to show you all the steps of, of the surgery. So here you see that um, there is here a vessel. We're gonna use that vessel as a signature vessel and uh, then you see in the depths here that there's another vessel, and we're using that other vessel again to re-register precisely. So we know where the tumor is according to that vessel. So the tumor is somewhere here, and it's a huge tumor. So um, here we, we see it again. We mark a little bit the cortex just to remember where we think the tumor is most likely on the surface. And, and then we're looking at the front edge to make the contour of the whole tumor. So we're going on one side and on the other or the other side of the gyrus, and uh, we define where it's the best place to cut, and then we, we'll cut the, the pia and, and start removing the tumor which is below. So here, you have different facility. It's actually, you can scan either. You can see the whole shape in 3D volume rendering, or you can have the XYZ projections, which allow us to understand the anatomy as we used to. So you can project that on the upper side of your eye field, and, and here again, I, I quite like to use this 3D rendering where the, the line here is showing what is in the plane of focus and all the rest of the image is actually what is below focus and you see that actually uh, I feel and I, I see that there is a difference of color and this is much easier when you the overlay and you follow the overlay and you can actually very nicely dissect the tumor so you have a very good understanding of where it should be. And when you know where it should be, it's like finding a needle. If you know where to look, you find a needle. If you don't know where to look, you don't find a needle. And here, what you do is you go to five ala, and what you see is that actually there is the five ala, and you see that actually the five ala is adjusted with the uh, contour of the segmentation. So again here, I was quite surprised. I didn't think that 5 ALA was enhancing as the contrast enhancement on, Im on imaging, but actually here it adjusts very well. So we can even use the fluorescent signal to readjust the navigation. As, as long as the shape is perfectly the same, we can assume that actually we're looking at the same structure. And here you see that again we can use this uh, image MIP, which is the raw data, and here you can see the edge of the ventricle and you see that the edge of the ventricle is perfectly adjusted with the tumor. So it's not always perfectly adjusted, but you have, you can readjust whenever you need to or whenever you want to. And actually I think in the future a computer could be actually assisting and tracking all the time and keeping things correctly adjusted. So here it's another example 
where you see actually the fluorescence. And here we are just on the bottom of the tumor. And again, the bottom of the tumor, you know how deep you have to, to go because you see where your tumor is and you can swap to the five ala. And again, you can see the contour of the five ala and the contour of the segmentation. And you can see how well those are adjusted. Actually, at the end, you can do uh, an imaging and you can compare the pre-op and the post-op imaging that are overlaid here. So the pre-op is in red and the post-op is in gray. And you can see that actually we were able to remove the tumor with a very good conformation according to the pre-operative pre uh, image, which I think I would not be able to do without this assistance. This is a case of an AVM. So in red, there is the AVM nidus. In yellow, there is an en passant vessel, which means that is a vessel that goes around the AVM. There are some branches feeding the AVM, but this also feeds normal tissue. And then you have here the sylvian artery, where here there is a feeder to the AVM. This is a proximal superficial branch. So actually, you can have an understanding of the AVM before you operate, before you open the skin. So this is the AVM where, where you actually see the glow going through. So you see that the glow is popping up. And uh, you actually identify here the veins we saw before. We identified the artery, the en passant artery here, and the green spot are actually the places where we decided we would put preventive clips. So here we put the preventive clips on both sides, and we see that the AVM is still getting green because we know there is some feeder from the deeps, and there is actually one feeder in the corner here which ends up in an aneurysm. And here, what we do is we clip the aneurysm and we keep the feeder alive so we can check it again. And so we can actually check that our theory that those vessels or tubes interconnected is true. So we put the clip on one side and we look at the other side. If we put the ICG and we see the fluorescence coming, it's meaning that actually we didn't lock the good vessel. If it's disappearing, it means that we locked the good vessel. And, uh, and what you see here is actually at the end of the surgery, there's the, the, the um, en passant vessel is still preserved. You see that the vein here and the AVM is not receiving any contrast. So actually having the augmented reality and the glow allowed us to remove the AVM, preserving small en passant vessels that would be having difficult to, to actually visualize and preserve uh, without. So... Um, that's, I think, the main message I wanted to give. And uh, while I hope you, you're going to use such tools, they are available on many different microscopes and on many different platforms. And, uh, well, thank you very much.